Okay, so uh, hello everybody. I'm get through this quickly so I don't get kicked out. Uh, my name <laughs> is Mitchell Scheel, and I'm here representing the Ontario Institute of Cancer Research Genome Informatics Group. And I'm going to be talking about something that we've been working on for quite some time, and that's Overture. Um, essentially, uh, I'm going to tell the story of what Overture is, so what we do, how we do it. And then by the end, I want to discuss about how we're branching out to the community at large and some of the challenges that we're finding associated with that. So our group is always about data and discovery. Two seminal projects that we've worked on are ICGC and the NIH GDC data portal. So these are two uh, large repositories of cancer genomics data with a large amount of metadata included as well too. And essentially in terms of infrastructure and what we're doing, it's the same story of taking in distributed data and unifying it into one singular resource. Now we've gained a lot of experience building up these data portals and we've pretty much found there's five core requirements to building out these portals. Listed out here. So these are an extensive list, but these are the four core requirements that we need to kind of build out these systems. Uh, the first being metadata management. We need to have a system for submitting metadata and ensuring that it's validated uh, in order to make those rich metadata repositories. We need a file transfer and object storage service in order to facilitate and gatekeep uh, object storage such that we're able to grab files with the proper authorization. We have indexing services that then make it searchable to an API. And then we also want to have a UI on the front portal that can interact with that UI. Uh, finally, we need authorization and authentication tools uh, in order to do this all responsibly and securely. So we were finding that we were doing similar projects again and again, and as developers, we always want to be working smarter, not harder. So that's why we developed Overture, which is a series of microservices that build into these, the genomics data portals. So again, it was made to reduce redundant programming efforts and also build into scalable and flexible genomics data management systems. Uh, as a testament to it, and actually before I get into the products that we worked on with Overture, uh, it's an orchestral theme. So we have five core microservices that you can see on the left of the screen. Uh, the first being Song, which is our metadata management service. Uh, again, this is familiar to the requirements that we just went over. We have Score, which is our file transfer service. We have Maestro, which is our indexer. We have Arranger, which is our search API and UI and then Ego, which is our authorization and authentication tool. Now, uh, following uh, making these microservices, we implemented them across our projects. Uh, so these are major projects up until today. Uh, first seminal project with Overture microservices using Song Store and Arranger was the kids' first data portal, so it's pediatric cancer sets. Uh, then we use Arranger in HGMI, which is a portal for human cancer models, so cells and tissues for researchers to kind of shop through and find the specific needs. Uh, we have the IHCC portal, which is a portal uh, of 100,000 cohorts plus, as well as some less for underrepresented communities. And then we have uh, two of our most recent and uh, probably largest projects, or most notable project being VirusSeq and ICGC Argo. VirusSeq is a data portal. Uh, it's different to what we've done in the past because it's dealing with viral RNA, whereas before we were mainly into cancer genomics. Uh, as a testament to Overture's ability to build out these systems quickly and flexibly, uh, it was we were able to build it in four weeks in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, and now it serves up to 400,000 around there viral uh, RNAs. Um, so uh, quite a great uh, use case in terms of its uh, flexibility and how we're able to use it to build these portals quite quickly. And then we have ICGC Argo, which is the next phase of ICGC. Uh, ICGC Argo is looking to uh, take 100,000 uh, cancer patients and pair it alongside with high quality clinical data, all accessible to researchers for their visualization, their machine learning and analysis pipeline. So what I want to do next is I want to go over in a little bit more detail uh, in terms of how Overture works and uh, in terms of our core microservices and how information flows through it. So I'm going to be going through these core microservices that you can see on the right side of the screen. But I first want to just discuss the players involved in any sort of Overture data management system. We have our data providers. Uh, they're the ones that have the DCFs, the BAMs, and the CRAMs, and all the associated metadata. 
And then you have your data administrators. So they're the ones with the data model or the schema. And finally, likely the most important is the data consumers. So they're the ones that come with the questions that ultimately drive the field and the knowledge, the knowledge of the field forward. So we'll start with Song, which is our metadata management microservice. Uh, Song starts with the data providers that have the genomic files, uh, as well as the associated metadata. And we want to be able to get that into a database. In this case, I'm calling it a Song database. So in order to do that, the data administrators supply a admin defined schema, which is a JSON document that defines the required metadata needed, what vocabularies are required, and the syntax that's uh, needed. What the data provider can then do is provide an analysis file, which is another JSON document that lists out all the metadata that they're associating with the upload into the repository. And on submission to Song, Song will carry out metadata validations, comparing it to that admin defined schema. And if everything is good, then it will pass it off into the Song database and Song will assign global identifiers. So these are automatic IDs that Song will apply so analysis IDs, donor IDs, specimen IDs, sample IDs, all sorts. So now we have a metadata repository that's validated. What we need to do then is get those file data up into the cloud. So that's where SCORE comes into play. Uh, it supports multi-part uploads uh, and downloads. Uh, it acts as a gatekeeper between your cloud storage provider and the data provider. And uh, what is quite robust about the system is that since we have Song managing the metadata and assigning the automated IDs, we're able to track the files in the cloud as well too. And this is all facilitated through uh, command line client tools that uh, are quite accessible and streamline the uh, upload process. So now that we have our file data that's in the cloud and we have the metadata in the database, uh, we move on to our indexer, which is Maestro. Oh, before I get there, though, uh, of course, data consumers now can download uh, through SCORE, and it also includes the SAM tools functionality, so we can do BAM and CRAM slicing. Um, again, next, we want to move on to indexing our metadata, and that's where Maestro comes into play. So Maestro takes the song database, and it produces an Elasticsearch index. It's quite simple, but what's beautiful about Maestro is it's able to take in multiple song databases and produce a single Elasticsearch index. So when I talked about our model about bringing in distributed data into one unified resource, Maestro is a central component in that as it can produce that single Elasticsearch index. Uh, of course, the index is not enough. So that's when Arranger comes into play. You want to be able to search through that data. Uh, Arranger is probably the most exciting microservice uh, that in terms of that we're offering because it's the most flexible of all of them. All you need is an Elasticsearch index, and what it's essentially doing is it's getting that data to the data consumers uh, in two potential ways. So by supplying your Elasticsearch index to a range of server, it will produce a GraphQL API, so a single endpoint API that you can make custom queries to. If you don't want to react, interact with a GraphQL API, a range of server communicates also with a range of components, which are highly configurable front-end UI components that will interact with the API and allow users to query through their data and produce cohorts that they can then download through our other microservices. What does that look like? Uh, it's important to be able to see it. You have your faceted search on the left-hand side here. So the three main arranger components, faceted search, where you can go through your filters. You have a filter location at the top so that you can share your filters so you understand what you're filtering through and you can see exactly on the screen. And then your actual cohort will be populated in the data table below. And again, this is highly configurable and only requires the Elasticsearch index. It's data agnostic. Um, so it's quite flexible and can be used in all sorts of different systems. Uh, finally, uh, we need to also be using this securely. So that's when we have our authentication and authorization tool, which is Ego. Uh, it comes in the Ego UI that makes the service accessible to all collaborators. It supports single sign-on identifiers like Google, GitHub, and Orchid. And uh, we've just recently integrated the uh, GA4GH passport, uh, making it more accessible uh, to our users. So that is Overture Data Management Systems. Now, as computational biologists, I know infrastructure is not necessarily always what you're looking at. So why does this necessarily matter to you? 
Well, using a system like this, you're able to organize your data such that you're then able to apply your analysis pipelines. You can build on top of it with your visualization tools, or you can build out your cohort uh, for machine learning models as well too. Uh, finally, um, my last sort of section here, I wanna talk about our journey in terms of uh, open source. We've always been open source. These are freely available on GitHub. Um, however, Overture has seen great success internally with OICR. It hasn't necessarily found the same success with the community at large, which is why we're here today. Um, our bread and butter has always been these large scale collaborative projects. And we're excited to say that we've, uh, our first venture beyond uh, OICR was uh, working with uh, the University of the Western Cape, uh, building the uh, African pathogen data sharing and archive platform. So this is Overture nodes that they're using. So they're using Overture and they have Overture nodes organizing a distributed uh, network uh, and producing a uh, discoverable web portal over, over the second largest continent in the world, Africa. And it's currently hosting SARS-CoV-2 data, malaria, HIV, uh, cholera data all over the continent. Um, with that said, not everyone here is part of a large consortium or a governmental agency, and we get that. Uh, and not everybody has a team of software engineers and developers that can put this together. Um, so what we've done is we've produced the over data, man the over data, man overture data management system, uh, which is all of our core microservices within one turnkey installation, making it more accessible to our users. Um, it's not as scalable and as flexible, obviously, because it comes as a turnkey installation but it's a step forward in terms of making this, uh, so these services more accessible to smaller groups and individuals. Uh, that said, we still face many challenges and opportunities. So uh, of course, why we're here and we're doing outreach is if you have data and you wanna make it discoverable, we wanna let you know that our tools can help. And finally, we want to hear from you guys to see how we could better meet your needs. So I'm at this conference, I'm trying to talk to as many of individuals as I can, uh, figure out what your needs are, how we're meeting them or how we're not meeting them. And maybe we can uh, work together to work on some mutually beneficial development. So of course, uh, at OICR, we're always open to academic collaborations, uh, technical consulting and mutually beneficial development. Uh, I'd like to thank the people doing all the hard work at the Genome Informatics Group, the ones creating and promoting the, the big data tools for those advancing the knowledge and treatment of cancer. And of course, I'd like to acknowledge the uh, funding agencies that make Overture possible. If you're interested, we have a website. Uh, we have a quite uh, detailed documentation from our website. You can check out our GitHub, which is Overture Stack. My email is up there. You can also reach out to the Juno app or just come find me and speak to me in person. I'm happy to chat. And uh, I'd like to thank you to taking the time and coming to listen to my talk. Thank you, Mitchell. Um, what are, were it any, are the, the QAQC steps, are there any between like a song and score or score and maestro, some uh, quality checks and validation steps for, for how you process your data? Okay, so um, for people in Juno, it's what are the QC checks and the validation steps for how we're processing data. Uh, so song is uh, probably the, the central point because we're doing metadata validations through song based off of the admin defined schema. Uh, and then the second point of control would be Maestro uh, that does conflict resolution. So especially because we have multiple databases bundling into one service and producing one index, you need to have that in order to make sure that there's no conflicts in the data sets such that you have one unified resource with no repetitive elements. Does that answer the question? Thank you. Uh, hi. Uh very nice talk, and uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, first of one uh, related to the metadata. Uh, you are able to, to validate just the metadata according to just the JSON schema or something like that, I guess so. Uh, but uh, is it possible to introduce some uh, custom additional checks related to validate uh, ontological terms, for instance, in the, uh, like annotations in several fields? So you are able uh, to realize that this just uh, 
a right term uh, being used in some field or something like that because uh, I'm thinking, for instance, on the kind of metadata you can provide in other huge facilities like EGA, where depending on the project, there are additional uh, custom checks, uh, which are at the end of the day, additional scripts just to check. Okay, so um, from your question, I'm guessing, well, your question is that, are there additional uh, ways that you can supply metadata uh, is it ontologies or schemas beyond the admin defined schema within the JSON document? Currently, from my understanding, no, it would take extra development to do that. Uh, we use the JSON schema. Uh -huh. Everything's defined within the JSON schema itself. Uh, although I'm interested to talk to see your ideas and maybe if we can develop it further to make it a bit more robust. Yeah, and my second question, sorry, <laughs> my second question is easier because uh, I have seen that uh, you have optimized just the access to data sets uh, which are based on genomics, but uh, is there some kind of limitation thinking on other kind of data sets like uh, uh, medical images, for instance? That's a fantastic question. <laughs> um, so this is something that we're talking about in our group right now. Uh, because Overture uh, has been initially an internal tool and we're the Ontario Institute of Cancer Research, we've been primarily involved in cancer genomics. Um, so with Song, uh, we have some uh, refactoring that we're doing in order to generalize it uh, because we're getting, well, it's kind of, a, it, it's, it, it's an iffy topic because we've done VirusSeq and we also, we're working right now with the University of Western Cape with their pathogen portal. And we're finding more people wanting to use our services for pathogens. So that requires generalizing our, uh, our base data model as well too. So it's definitely something on our minds is something we wanna get done because once that's done, then uh, it makes it way more accessible to all sorts of uh, different users. Plant biologists as well too is something we've talked about, uh, meteorology, uh, there's all sorts of data that we can uh, help apply a song to. One last question, sorry. Uh, yeah, I just had a quick question about um, the data intake side of things. So if we have a limb system that just dumps the data on our storage cluster, you know, can something like that be um, imported into your system? How would that work? So it dumps the data onto your storage cluster. Uh, that data is in, it's in a database and you have file data that's in object storage, no? No, no database, just, just, uh, just data. Just data. files. Okay. You know. Yeah, uh, yeah, that'd be a bit trickier. Uh, usually you're going to need to be, so Song is what you're going to be submitting everything through. It has to go through Song if you're using uh, those services. Uh, the only other gateway in, um, which is why I like Ranger, is that if you can produce an Elasticsearch index from your data, then you can plug it into a Ranger and then search through that data. But if you want to validate it, then you're going to have to be using things like Song and Score. Thank you.